You're watching Weekend at Gabe's and I'm Weekend Gabe. This latest episode was brought to you by the good folks over at the Ghetto Flower. Use our code WATG for an exclusive 15% discount when visiting their site. Tell them I sent you. Now enjoy the show. Yo, broadcasting live to you and yours is Weekend Gabe holding you down on Weekend at Gabe's on this Tuesday, July 19th, 2022. We got a big show lined up for you. Aspiring superstar Patrick Sun is joining us to talk about his new EP, Crash, that just dropped last week. So we got a lot to get into with him. Fantastic music, fantastic conversation due up. And also, we have a new Gabe's Eats that's dropping. Headed over to Sam's Back and Neck of the Woods. And we're going to hit up Mickey's and see if the burgers are as good as they sound. So we got a lot going on. Give us a follow on these socials at Weekend Gabe, at Weekend at Gabe's, and also at The Real Sam Crane. And give The Ghetto Flower also a follow. Speaking of The Real Sam Crane, joining us from Undisclosed Batman location, how are you? I am very odd this evening. You can see Salute. I got my hat on because uh, the homie Odd Couple invited me out to his show. He said, bro, I'm damn near almost sold out of hats. This was before the hats even dropped. And I was like, oh, I got to get that. So I'm feeling very odd today. You can go get those on the Odd Couple store. And you can also head over to the Ghetto Flower and use our code W at sign G for 15% off of your purchase of $50 or more. But how are you doing, Weekend Gabe? That's what the people want to know. It's what the people came to see. Listen, been off work for a couple of days. Uh, had tons of time today to do the edit for Gabe's Eats. So I'm really excited for people to see it because I think it's great. It came out really well. Uh, and DJ, give me, give, me, give, me a, give me a short verdict here. How did, how did you feel about the whole Mickey's process? You know, uh, they, everyone was cool. Uh, everyone was super sus about us pulling up with cameras. Feels like they don't really like cameras in that establishment unless it's their Real own. Mafioso, <laughs> you know what I'm I mean, That's but how it was we like it though. It, it was a Sunday afternoon, so really not a lot of traffic. It was just us and uh, uh, DJ Radioactive and me in the uh, in the establishment. But it went really well, man. You know, everyone was super cool. Manager was super give cool. Me, give go- me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. On there you go. That's what I'm What's talking up? about, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it here first. We're gonna get into the nitty gritty details later but for yeah. now it is time for america's favorite news segment it's not news that your mom cares about your dad doesn't give a shit you called your sister about this news she would be like fuck you why are you on my phone but there is one man who cares so that you don't have to and his name is weekend gabe and that's why it's news that oh weekend gabe cares about all right let's Sponsored get by the ghetto flower there you go thank you all right, uh, let's get into the news uh, that today it was reported. Uh, Rolling Stone did an in-depth invest- investigation about the bots that helped drive the return to Snyderverse hashtag that we saw at the beginning or at the end of last year that ended up giving us the Justice League director's cut that everyone solely wanted. Uh, but it was all it was all driven four by day bots. Long Justice League director. Yeah, cut. four days. Like yeah, exactly. Four hours of Justice League. <laughs> Which I, uh, ask me how many times I've replayed Justice League four hours. Zero times. Zero times. Yeah. So I once I was like, good, cool, better than the shitty one that Josh Whedon did. But uh, I probably, I mean, maybe it's better that I saw it, but does it change my life? No. Uh, but they did a, a scan of like all the all the accounts through social media, Twitter, Facebook about return or uh, release the Snyder cut. And 13% of those accounts were all bots or paid for accounts that were just regurgitating what other people were saying. So it gives a lot of credence to whether or not there really was any pressure for Warner Brothers to really drop the Snyder Cut. Uh, But anyways, now that we notice and you know a lot about bots and how that works on the social medias, uh, what, what are your thoughts about that? Well, um, I'm, I've done a little bit of uh, Twitter research myself, and this problem actually goes a lot deeper than you might think. So just for this specific Snyder verse thing, uh, 13 to 15, I'm going to round that up to 15% were bots. Um, but uh, a study from uh, all of this underlined by the fact that Elon Musk pulled out of his Twitter takeover deal a few weeks ago. And I know nobody cares about that. But the reason that he pulled out 
was uh, they would not provide accurate information on how many bots were on the platform. Uh, and I think the, the ugly truth, what people may not want to realize and what the greater public will someday understand and it will shock and awe them, uh, is that there's actually not that many real people on Twitter.com. There's really not that many real people on Instagram. Uh, the bots are a solid, a notable section of the population, shall we say. Right. Now, that doesn't have to be 50%. I'm not saying that 80% of Twitter users are bots. But I think the number, the real number, is somewhere around 47%. Uh, and that sort of fudges the numbers on 44 billion uh, when you're talking when you're talking takeover talk. So uh, this does not surprise me. Um, all of this just means get off your phone. Go outside. <laughs> it's not that serious. You know, lots of these people are bots. Lots of these people. Uh, you've seen the uh, when Boris Johnson got fired, there were literally copy and pasted tweets saying, I don't know why Boris Johnson would leave. He was the greatest prime minister we ever had. And there was literally a guy who searched that phrase and it was all of the same tweet from different accounts. And yeah. they were all under CNN's page, under all these pages. There's so much fake traffic. There's so much fake traffic. And if, you know, five people like your tweet today, then I hope all five of those people are real. That's all I got to say. Listen, I got 12 uh, likes from Elliot Wilson and his followers today. So that was a win. That is a win. Although my impressions was like 200. But, you know, hey, you take what you can get. I'm saying, but it's a win. It's only 200, right? I mean, it gets, even, it gets even worse when you're talking about paid ads and, like, how many views you get on the paid ads or how many views it tells you you get. How many of them views come from fake accounts? The exactly. thing is, Twitter would love to get you in the mode of like, oh, well, Twitter does all it can to fight bots. That's not true. A certain amount of bots are necessary for Twitter to operate as the ecosystem that it is. So, uh, you know what I'm saying? If you got a pond, you got to have algae. That is what it is. <laughs> hey, you got to put that on a shirt. You know, I'd buy that. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, shout out to the Snyder Cut and it coming out. So, uh, but don't expect to restore the Snyder universe. So that ain't coming. Ever. <laughs> get, get over it, America. All right, let's move to something that's way more important on today's news. Arnold Schwarzenegger, man, farted in the face of an actress <laughs> on the set of the 1990 horror movie End of Days. This is this is grand news today. <laughs> <laughs> so uh I don't even know who this actress is. So I'm I'm gonna it's Miriam Margoliez. She was the co-star. And end of days. So she's quoted as saying that she was, uh, I was playing Satan's sister and he was killing me. So he had me in a position where I couldn't escape. And while lying on the floor, he just farted. So the homie bust ass in front of her face. And now she went on a podcast with 1999. Let's think about that. It's like the 24, 23 years later. It was oh, all, like, uh, all shit faced about it. No pun. <laughs> <laughs> This is like, you know, as far as like, if you're Arnold Schwarzenegger, you're, you're like, you open this news and you're like, oh, thank God. You know what I mean? Like this right. is, the, this is like, honestly, one of the better tabloids that has ever come across. His <laughs> it's like, yo, uh, but she said that he was, he was a bit of a jerk. So she doesn't think it was, she thinks it was intentional that he was just being an asshole, that he was quite rude during the film shoot. But, uh, you know, I mean, as a kid, we were doing that shit all the time. I mean, it was hella rude and uncalled for, but this is pretty normal. But when you think of, like, you know, uh, Arnold was probably, like, in his 50s doing this shit, that's kind of wild. <laughs> Crazy, man. Crazy. Yeah, exactly. So uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger out there wilding 20 years ago. I mean, not so much today these days. It's actually pretty stable. <laughs> Unlike Herschel Walker, he's pretty stable, man. All right, last news bit of tonight, man. This one hurt my soul. And I, you guys probably already heard that the dynamic duo, Deez and Miro, and their late night partnership uh, with Showtime. The, the podcast Brand. is over. The Bodega Boys finished. Man, we found out over the weekend. It was all like sort of hearsay. And then the news sort of trickled out that it's true. 
Uh, I've been fucking with them since Viceland when they were on there, and I used to watch it religiously. Uh, and I've always rooted for them because I thought they were funny. Their improv game is amazing. Uh, I really appreciated just the honesty and the and the bruteness in their in their comedy and just how fun they were having. So I'm I'm, I'm disappointed to see them break up. But my question is, Sam. Uh, what is the be- what is the worst breakup you've seen as far as like people you really uh, oh, love to, to see succeed? Are I'm we talking? Go- just, are we just talking entertainers? I- I'm going to go through four, and then you can just piggyback off. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um, when a tribe called Quest broke up. Okay. When Death Row Records broke up. Okay. When G Unit broke up, mm. and then when my, my favorite group uh, of all time, Little Brother, broke up. Those were just like little brothers, your favorite group of all time. <laughs> all right, yeah. Uh, a second to Wu Tang, of course. Okay. Um, but yeah, when they when the, all those guys broke up or those groups broke up, I was like, "Fuck, what is there to believe in?" And this kind of ranks up there in the top five of like, yeah. "God damn, this sucks." Uh, you know, it was tough for me. This wasn't it wasn't like a breakup, but uh, I I truly believe to this day, first take was better with Skip Bayless and Stephen A. Smith. Yeah, uh, and ever since Max Kellerman came in, it just wasn't the same. Max Kellerman didn't last very long either. Uh, now they got all these different dudes, so that was that was one that I definitely stopped watching first take uh, after that. I was like, you know, this is this is not the show that it once was. Um, the Jesus and Mero thing, obviously, uh, when Kanye was yelling at Jay Z, that was a tough spot for me to be in. You know, on the internet, uh, that was not great. <laughs> right. Um, I'm trying to think, man. Uh, there are a lot of beefs that I can think of that I actually greatly enjoyed and I wish would come back. Uh, the Chris Brown Drake beef was great. I think we should bring that back. Um, <laughs> How would you run that back? Yeah, run that back for sure. Like Drake was dropping all these bars about how he was flying out Chris Brown's girl. Like, oh man, that was just top. You know, go back. <laughs> in the uh, one of my favorite Twitter beefs of all time was when Kanye, uh, Wiz Khalifa tweeted KK, the letters KK, which Kanye then interpreted to mean Kim Kardashian. Uh, and Kanye went on a huge Twitter tirade in the middle of my school day. And I literally had to excuse myself from class so I could go be on Twitter at this absolutely excellent moment where Kanye fired off the tweet. The other day, I looked at your pants, bro. I literally called my stylist and I said, Wiz wears cool pants. Get me some of those pants, bro. And then he wrote, hashtag, Wiz wears cool pants. Um, one of the greatest hashtags of all time. <laughs> Honestly, I think about that far too often on a day-to-day basis. And then the follow-up tweet, which was even better, was Wiz Khalifa coming back and saying, uh, KK is a strain of weed, you dumbass. I don't care about your wife. Uh, and then Kanye mm. came back and said, "Ah, Wiz has lost 23 million Instagram or Twitter followers since I started yelling at him. I should probably chill." Uh, and that was the <laughs> end of the that was the end of that day on the internet. And there's actually not a better day than that day. I have not had a better day on Twitter.com than that. Uh, but yeah. Um, R.I.P. Jesus and Mero. I know the Bodega Hive is upset. Um, honestly. I hope these dudes do, you know, better stuff when they're split up, sort of like Key and Peel did, you know. Uh, yeah. We'll see what happens. All I know is there's a spot open at the top. Viceland, call me. Call me, Viceland. Showtime, we could get it cracking. Whatever you need. Whatever we, you need. We, we can fill that void, no problem. No pee. Complex, no. if you need us, we're just a call away. Just a call away. Exactly. Uh, really quick, So, I, someone on a Reddit thread said that uh, these is – is destined to be in the A24 film, and Miro is destined to be the next Wendy Williams. <laughs> I was like, uh, either of these could be accurate. but uh, Both of those I, could be accurate. We haven't, we haven't, I mean, I hope we cover this again when there is actually more tea. You know what I'm saying? Uh, oh, yeah. Because yeah, Jesus said something to the effect of, like, I would the, explain it, but wait for it to drop. Uh, so yeah, wait for the truth to come out. I guess we are waiting for the truth to come out, uh, Jesus Nice on Twitter.com. Considering that you left your paying job, that is what I will be calling you until you find another one. Uh, so, account user Jesus Nice from Twitter.com. I hope things go well for you. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Well, rest in peace to the to the Bodega Boys, man. It was a good run. You know, brought in tons of laughs. All right. Time. Closes, Call me. Close out. <laughs> Our news <laughs> that Gabe only cares about on this July 19, 2022. Thank you for watching the latest episode of Weekend at Games on YouTube brought to you by the Ghetto Flower. Make sure to also click on the links in the description for more information to our guests and access to exclusive new music from the Ghetto Flower and so much more. Make sure to also like and subscribe to the show and also continue to share support and show love by clicking on any of the links surrounding my head. Thanks for watching.